Hello there everybody, this is Krista and welcome back to the Krista Chronicles. And today, as you can tell from the title, we're going to be looking at some early fall decks. Now I know, I know it is not technically fall, but we officially hit, we had a few days in the low 70s last week, and so I'm getting into it. <laughs> and I've got, I actually have some other justification for it. Not that I need it, but here's my thought process, is that I'm calling these early fall decks because these are my decks that kind of just give fall season energy, which usually with my seasonal deck videos, I do a video per season. However, fall is different because as we know, we've got spooky season coming up. And I thought it kind of be interesting to differentiate between instead of doing one huge video because I love Halloween, so I have a lot of Halloween spooky season feeling specific decks. I thought it'd be interesting to differentiate between things that kind of feel like more this like late August and September, that kind of fall feel. And then I'm going to do a separate video on my decks for October, because again, favorite time of the year. So I've got a lot of things that feel more specifically that energy, plus also just actual Halloween themed decks. So that's what we're getting into. So these are the decks. I probably... I'm gonna say definitely <laughs> am missing, or this is, I shouldn't say this is, this is not like an extensive list. It's probably most of the ones that feel like this energy to me, but I kind of just went through and grabbed whatever immediately felt like this vibe, very specific vibe to me. Um, but of course there's other ones I want to be using because there's some that like, I don't know, I feel like they really feel specifically right this time of year, but I do use them year round, like uh, Memento Mori, Antique Anatomy. What else? Like the Green Witch Tarot. They feel seasonal to this, but like I do use them all year, so I tried to leave out things of that sort. But I think we should just get into it. Or should I like, I don't know. I'm in a very specific mood this year and it's very much and I think it's because I've gotten so much into reading since last year. And so I think that is also kind of, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Informing the tarot vibe. So the, the feel I've been looking for is kind of this like dark academia, a bit vintage, but kind of like also like dark fantasy. I don't know. That's just been the feeling and that feels very much like this kind of like fall seasonal energy before we get into Halloween. So I've got a big basket here. We're just going to get into it. I was at first <clears throat> going to go try and go like tarot, then oracle or, you know, keep them separate. But um, I'm just going to grab. We're just going to go. So, okay, starting off with what I have here. The Mystic Masters Tarot by Danny Mystic. Now this is one that absolutely, I mean any of these can be used all year long, let's be real. Um, but I feel like especially this one I think fits a lot of different seasonal energies but, and I keep trying it in different seasons. And what I've landed on over the past I don't know, bit, <laughs> is that I, well, I do think this is one that's fun in the summer, I think because of the colors. I think in the summertime, these sort of like high art feeling decks just don't tend to be the thing for me. I always want to get into my plant decks and the very like naturey feeling things where, again, I'm, I'm feeling that kind of dark, academia or like magical school kind of vibe this time of year and I usually do feel that this time of year and I've just had the realization of this kind of fine art style deck 
totally fits that feeling. And so, yeah, I think seasonally is making sense to me to have it this time of year. And I think this is a nice transitional deck from summer into fall because a lot of the decks I have in this basket can't like are a bit more muted, a bit more kind of like brown, tan, where we've still got color here. And so like a day like today, it's gonna be, I think like 80 today, 80 and sunny. So, you know, maybe the <laughs> real, like the darker decks don't exactly fit what's going on outside. I think this is a really good transitional piece for this. It sounds like a kind of like a harvest season feel. So, Mr. Masters, excited to have that back out. Okay. This next one is one that I got for review from US Games and I loved it when I got it, but it was one that immediately I was like, I'm gonna hold on to this for the fall. And I think this is one that might be kind of, I'll be curious to see if this is a September or if it's more when I go back into fall in November. I don't know, I think it could be both possibly, but it is the Star Maiden Tarot. Regardless, this just had a really specifically kind of fall, feel to me. I love the, what would you call it, like folk art style to this. That's another thing that I think all year I really love any kind of folk art looking <laughs> I, I'm gonna I was gonna say deck but really anything that has that feel to it I just love so much I think it's because it always feels very cozy but this definitely has that folk art feel to me which especially this time of year I really lean into but I think it's it's the it's interesting because it does it's very colorful but it's in this in these deeper tones, very saturated tones, which again, actually similar to Mystic Masters, it feels perfect for this exact time because we're still getting the color that I am seeing outside. We still are very green. I still have flowers blooming. It's just there's this different feeling in the air because it's getting a little bit cooler you can see things are kind of on the decline. So while it's still a bit warm, still bright, we are starting to see hints of that darkness, which I think this deck fits really well. I'm so excited to really get into this. I've been saving it. Like, look at that death card. Saving it for the fall. So that is the Star Maiden Tarot. Oh, I just put that in there, so weird. Okay. Ooh, okay, next we've got a steampunk duo. I'll do them one at a time, but we'll just do them two in a row, because that's another thing. Steampunk, I feel like, feels so right. Truly, again, for, I find that this these decks are ones that I tend to lean into in both September and November. Maybe, well, I don't know. November tends to get a little bit more, like, really vintage feeling, though. So, I don't know. Anyway, but Steampunk feels like it's, it is good throughout. So, anyway, starting with the Maxine Gads Zoological. Zoologica, the Steampunk Oracle. This is a round deck, so we're gonna have things going every which way. Oh, but it's so cute. So this is a, an animal deck. I do have a full walkthrough of this up. Um, so each card is an animal, but done in this steampunk style. 
I really love it. It really has kind of, because of the circle, it has a bit of a portal feel to me, which I think is super cool. It almost feels like walking through a museum and these are all the different specimens too. I've gotten into using this one already and I really like it. I think it's, of course, I'm an animal deck gal. I've got many, but the ones that tend to really stick around for me are when, one, we get different animals than I usually see, but two, when they're interpreted in a more unique way. And I do feel like this deck does that. It's not exactly what you think is going to come up. Like I pulled the jellyfish yesterday, which, yep, it's actually right here. And my immediate reaction was like, oh, sting. But that's not what the book got into at all. I was talking more about going with the flow. I'm like, well, that makes sense too, but it's just interesting because my mind wouldn't have gone there. So yes, I really like this one. That is the Zoologica Steampunk Oracle. And the other steampunk deck is one that I just did a walkthrough of. This is new out, I think it's out. Pretty, pretty sure on that. But it is the Steampunk Fairy Tarot. And I actually have been using these two decks together, which is why I'm saying Steampunk Duo. And I think they work really well together. I think they also just look really nice together. This just hasn't disappointed. This was probably my most anticipated release for I'd say like the second half of this year honestly and it's it is everything I was hoping it would be and more. I think this deck shows great just attention to diversity you could say. Why did I say it that way? It's a diverse deck. That's like the normal way to say that. <laughs> um which I think is so cool. Well, keep it, it's it's so magical feeling. So it's interesting to me that, you know, you really can do both in a deck. And I think there was, you know, there's the opportunity to do that, and they they grasped it, and it. I think it's so beautiful and so well done. And again, I love this. It's such an interesting steampunk feel. This is making me, gosh, I rehomed my steampunk tarot, that, you know, original one, because I trimmed the borders off, and then, I don't know. I think it looks good with the, the borders trimmed off, but then it wasn't as nice to shuffle. Now, seeing this, like, steampunk theme again, Cause it'd be so cool to use this with the steampunk tarot. It's kind of making me want to get it again. I don't know, I'll have to watch some walkthroughs cause I don't really remember it. But yeah, I've really been enjoying this one. I've had it for about a little over a week now and I've used it so many times. I think it's perfect for this time of year. So that is the steampunk fairy tarot. All right, let's do an oracle. Southern Gothic Oracle. I love these decks. I had the Botanic out all spring and summer and used it a bunch and loved it, but as soon as it shifts into that mid-August feel, this is what I want. Because I think this does work well in the fall, but since it's, you know, it is focused on the south, the south set tends to stay warmer than it does around here. So I feel like the weather we're having right now is a look at possibly what the South experiences in the fall, question mark? I have no idea. I've not really been that direction of the country much, so I don't know. But yeah, something about this really makes me think of that mid to late August like we're in now, but also September. 
I think it's so perfect for this time of year. And then I do also have, I don't have it shuffled into here because I don't really find that the cardstock uh, feels cohesive. Like they, they kind of stand out. So I, I keep them separate. I have the, oh gosh, I can't think, the Haunts, the Haunts expansion and also though the Poisons. And I found it to be the same for both where they don't really shuffle into the deck well. But, so now I've just got this other deck, which is cool too, because it's it's this shadow energy that you get from both. So this is what I tend to more so take out when it comes to, I don't know, really being in the depths of fall, I suppose. And I, I do, again, I do like having this little outside mini deck, so it works that way too, but anyway. That makes it feel a bit more like true, like fall to here, but this feels a bit more like that, again, like harvest season around here. But a great transition. Look at that. Oh, the art is just so beautiful. I love, love these decks. That's the Southern Gothic Oracle. Okay. The Cozy Witch Tarot. Yes, I love this bag. I made except the flap is kind of wonky. I think I made it too wide. But you know, that's okay. I like the feel. It's a cotton yarn. Which I don't have a ton of. I don't tend to usually use it. But I liked it for that bag. I mean, come on. This deck feels to me like, I don't know. It's got like that Gilmore Girls kind of fall feel. Like really... I mean, of course, it's called the Cozy Witch Tarot, but for good reason. It's got a cozy feel. And this kind of peachy tan color on the backs and the borders just... I don't know. Something about that shade makes me feel so, like, warm and fuzzy inside. I love this deck. I used this deck, I think it came out around this time last year, or that's just when I got it. I have no idea. I use it a ton. And really, really enjoyed it for this time of year. And I'm so excited to have it out again. This feels like such a good inner teen deck to me. That's really, I think, where the energy lands. Because it definitely does lean, the artwork leans a bit young. Even though we do have other like a lot of different ages in here. I think just the art style feels that way. Um, yeah, I just, I love this deck. And I think too, because you get the keyword right on the card, it's one of the few decks that I don't even, I keep it in here. I don't even have the book with it. I know I still have the book. I couldn't tell you where it is though, because I don't use it. This is like the perfect single card draw deck for me. I love it so much. I'm so excited to have this one back out. Cozy Witch Tarot. And I found charms that are these little coffee mugs with cats. So cute to match the back. So fun. Okay. Come on. I'm working on this flap style bag because I do love seeing when other people make these. I think usually when you see crocheted uh, tarot bags, it's usually this kind of flap style, which for good reason, I think it's so nice. So I'm working on learning how to do that. I just, as you can tell, not super my forte yet, but that's okay. All right. Earthly Souls and Spirits Moon Oracle. This feels like the perfect late summer, early fall. It's like the nighttime. Again, how we still have this color, but I think because of the witchy theme, we've got a lot of crows and pumpkins. It's got a real harvest season feel to me. It's so pretty, this deck. I love it so much. And I think the keywords are awesome. 
it pairs with a lot of stuff I like to use this time of year. This is one too. I like taking this out. I don't know. It feels very fall to me. I'll use it though in usually like both September and November. Last year was my first year with this deck and I'm excited to have this out again. I feel like this is the perfect, again, and because of the, all the witches, I feel like it scratches the itch of wanting to rush right into all the spooky season stuff because it's my favorite. And not to say that I don't get into it early, because I do, but I try to at least <laughs> wait until like mid-September. Not for any reason other than I don't want to rush through all my usual favorite things and then end up like in the middle of October being over it already because that's also how my brain works so it's more so for that. I like to have a full October of like of really feeling that energy but this really scratches that itch because it's witchy, it's magical but I think it doesn't, you know, it's one that once I have all my Halloween decks out. I don't usually go towards this one because I, I like to really spend time with those in October. So, love this one. That is the Earthly Souls and Spirits Moon Oracle. Okay, next one I grabbed. The Divine Muses Oracle. I think this is the, I know there was multi, this is currently out of print, except that I think you can get a French version. A French mass market version. Um, I know there was multiple editions. Though. Not that it matters, again, because it's out of print. So why? Anyway. Anyway. This is one, I don't know, it just feels like the vibe right now. Another one, though, that I also tend to pull this out in November, but it's just got a real... This one feels more so like that dark academia vibe as well. I think it's like the fine art decks mixed with kind of vintage collage, which is usually kind of how I... What am I trying to say here? <laughs> I'm like starting off all my sentences so strangely tends to be the kind of collage decks I like. Okay, because <laughs> collage usually isn't for me, but these kind of vintage collages, I love. So this is kind of scratching that dark academia itch. Oh, I hate that saying. I'm so sorry. I don't like that saying like scratches the itch. Like, ugh. it weirds me out and I say it all the time. <laughs> so anyway, but another one, Feel similar but again I didn't take it out because I truly use it all year long but the Coastal Curiosities Oracle this is the pocket that I keep on my desk but yeah oh gosh just another example I felt like I needed to show <laughs> of vintage collage which actually speaking of I've got another one right here that fits this vibe as well so anyway Divine Muses we won't spend long on that because it's out of print and you know I think it's gonna come back somehow, some way though, because there is, again, that French version, so you could get that. I don't know, anyway. Other deck sitting right here that I totally forgot to add in this basket is the Stretch Tarot. I think this is really awesome for this time of year too, and it was sitting on my desk because I've been using it. So, yeah. Clearly good for this time of year for me if I'm using it enough to leave it on my desk here. But yeah. Ooh, these would be cool. I should try them together. I love getting the keywords on the cards. I think it's so fun. I love a I love a deck with keywords on it. I really do. It's making me want to. I've been going through the uh, advanced reader's copy of Lisa's book, which is her tarot with training wheels. Um, I'll mix with a little bit of her other course in book form. It's fantastic. But maybe I should like, oh, that'd be fun to do just like a, a little deck for myself. 
kind of like this with the keywords on it. That would be fun. Because I haven't, even when I was doing the tarot with training wheels, I always just like keep a notebook where I write down my keywords. I just can't get myself to write it on a card. Even though I know I can, I've got, like I've got my RWS, I could just get another copy. I don't know what it is that I just can't do it. I think it's because I know I'm not gonna like how my handwriting looks on it. Cause I don't, I'm not a neat writer. But that's, a, that would be a fun idea, huh? And like get it printed. <gasps> Ooh, okay, that feels fun. Anyway, stretch tarot. Love that one. I've been really liking that. Let's leave that here with the Divine Muses, because I want to see those together. Should we just do it now? Let's just do it now. Because while I'm here to show you just <laughs> a bunch of decks, I can do what I want. And we're having playtime. Yay! Oh, yeah, this is good. Already. What a vibe this is. I love this so much. Wow, I wasn't sure because, I don't know, sometimes collage with collage feels like a lot. But I think because we get the brighter colors in here, but we it's kind of like anchored by a lot of black around the edges and the more muted colors here feeling anchored by a lot of tan. It works. Oh, that's so cool. I love that. That's so exciting. Okay, yay. We're definitely going to use those together. on Fidel Luna. This is the paradoxical, yes. Okay, and this is the, uh, not the illustrated. This is the Marseille version. And it's the browns. Feels so right for this time of year. I'm not really, honestly, a Marseille person. It doesn't really interest me that much. <laughs> to be totally honest. And I think, uh, I think purely it's because I tend most of the time to do single card draws. So like, you know, like a pip style decks while I love them and I still use them. The most of the time I use them on the occasions I'm pulling more than one tarot card. So I don't really feel a need to have a ton of them. I've got the few I love, but I love this one. I really do love this one. Cause it's got that, that good, just creepy feel to it that I really enjoy. Yeah, I'm excited about this one. To be out again. That is the Chironfi de la Luna, Marseille, the paradoxical. And I made it a cute little matching bag with my original illustrated, the original coloring. Is that in here too? Oh, it's not. It should be though. Let's find it. <coughs> here it is. Oh my gosh, this bag is like, all tattered in comparison. It even lost <laughs> lost a bead on the edge. I have to replace it, but oh, is that cute? This is my illustrated pips. No, yes, yeah, illustrated pips. This is that first one that came out. So the original 
coloring, and this is the Paradoxical of the Marseille. I do also have the Aquadoxical of the Illustrated Pips that is more of like a, when I'm wanting something a bit creepy feeling in the summer. But this is this time of year for me too, for certain. Again, it's that beige, something about the beige backgrounds just, and still having color but a bit muted just feels right to this time of year. I love this deck, so good. And this kind of red, yes, the maroon red is too perfect. I gotta fix this bag. <laughs> the bag is fine, I should say. It's just somewhere along the way, a bead fell off. Anyway, my tree on Fidel Luna's. Let's keep going on the pips because, again, while I say that I don't tend to prefer them, there are still some I really love, this being one of them. The Age of Witchery Tarot by Roger J. Horn. I love this one. I love using this one with the uh, Folk Witch. What is that book called? Cardamancy in Folk Witchcraft. I use this deck in tandem with that. And I love it. This one has a real harvest season feel to me too. I think because it's got these, one of the, oh my gosh. Miners is renamed Roots of the uh, Pentacles. It's renamed Roots, which I think is super cool. We've got a lot of farm life going on here. It's again, got a very folk magic feel, of course, which is, Totally the feel of this time of year to me. And it's another one though that feels like it scratches that, wanting that just like spookier things, because it's very witchy. So I really, again, another one, eh, do I use it all year round? I use it all like the darker half of the year, I should say, uh, but it just really feels very specifically suited for this type of year. I, I love this one. I love this color. Brown, yet again. So, that is the Age of Witchery Tarot. A classic for this time of year. I think we all pretty much feel similarly about this deck. It's the Hush Tarot. I have in this beautiful bag. I'm blinking on, oh my gosh. I'm blinking on their name. What the heck? And I just was watching a video. <laughs> Let's, I have to, I have to talk about these bags every time I show them because I think they're amazing. And I've got actually, the next one I'm gonna show is in one of these bags as well. And it's the three girls, one deck. Um, Sunset Bow Tarot, oh my gosh. Sunset Bow Tarot makes these zipper bags that I love so much. I have quite a few of them. This is my Hush Tarot's in, but this I think a lot of us feel is perfect to the kind of end of summer, early fall, because we've still got quite a bit of green and life going on in here, but we're seeing like active decay, which when I go outside now again, yes, there's a lot of life going on still, but you can tell it's in a decline. There are things that are absolutely already starting to decay. Everything is slowing down. And that's what this deck really feels like to me. I love this deck so much. Probably, I feel like it's one I don't talk about a ton. Uh, but this is a, definitely a top one for me. I just think it's really beautiful. I think it's interesting. It's got a lot of things that I just really like in it. 
don't know why it's all flipped over the place. But yeah, especially this time of year, I love, love pulling this one out. So the Hush Tarot. And in another Sunset Bow Tarot bag, we've got the Golden Tarot. Is this not perfect for the Golden Tarot? All these golden leaves and owls. I mean, yes. So this is one I, I, lo I love this one any time of year, but this like deep golden yellow color feels perfect right now because it feels like the kind of like how the sunlight looks in the mid to late afternoon where it gets that golden color this time of year because the sun is down at, like farther in the sky farther down in the sky than it has been but also it's got that you know it's got the fine art elements which feel right to this time of year i really like taking this one out this one again feels a bit more transitional which is perfect. Oh, it's so good. I just, I love this deck so much. But yeah, it definitely tends to get a little bit more play this time of year. But, oh, such a favorite. The Golden Tarot. <clears throat> All right. The Witch Folk Tarot. This is another one that... Feels like a late summer, early fall night. We get that... Folk witchcraft feel. It's a little bit strange. Definitely has some different takes on some cards. It's just interesting. And a little wonky and a little spooky. And it feels like a dark, magical forest. Which has been kind of the theme of a lot of the books I've been reading lately, or been wanting to read lately. And so it just really feels like it goes well with that. That vibe I've been getting into. Oh, it's so good. I love this deck so much. It's so strange. It really is. But I love the color palette, all the stuff going on in it. But we still see some flowers, but odd flowers. Look at that cat. But it just, it scratches that witchy, spooky. No, I can't say that again. <laughs> it gets to that feeling without getting into my more specific spooky season decks. I love this one. So that is the folk, see, I don't know, it's called different stuff. On the guidebook it says folk witch tarot. But the box says witch folk tarot, so I don't know. But I have links to everything below as usual. Okay, let's do another oracle. The Mists of Avalon. It just has that fantasy feeling, but I think the artwork, it's the color tones that are, because they're a bit darker, a bit muted, that make it feel right to this time of year, but also like really getting into that fantasy feel. Well, it's something that I am into all year long, because that's just my favorite. The fall, I definitely more intense. Like, that's all I want to consume is something magical and fantasy. And yeah, this just really fits that feeling. And again, it feels a bit darker because of the colors and the way the art is done. It's an interesting one with like the four different keywords. 
too around the edges but yeah i really like this one this time of year that is the mists of avalon oracle okay oh this is a fun one the pulp girls tarot i really like this this is another kind of inner teen feeling one like look at the backs oh gosh teenage me would have loved this too like the purple i edged it in purple to match but this one it's definitely because the figures a lot of the figures are drawn with witch's hat or other fantasy elements but then it's this is it black or navy blue i think it's black the black border on it with this golden lettering feels very fall to me this is just it is an rws clone so it's what i like to use for just quick readings it's so fun the coloring of it is just oh, it's so good it's got that again that like kind of hazy feel to it that i think is so present right now at least where i am And I think because of the heavy use of the color black in different places and like around the borders, even though we're getting these bright colors, it's it feels toned down. Oh, it's so good. I love this one so much. So that is the Pulp Girls Tarot. Ooh, okay, yes. You know I have to pull out one of my witches oracle decks, and I think all of them pretty much. I use them year round <laughs> um, for just all different reasons, but the one that felt sort of uh, seasonal to right now is the witch's kitchen. We won't look at this long because I know I talk about this one a lot, but I think because it's still bringing in those plant energies but it's more so, it, it brings them indoors. And so it feels like it's less about the growing of these plants, more about the processing of these plants, which is what I'm doing right now. You know, recognizing that things are nearing the end of their growth cycle. So it's time to really do a hard harvest like I just cut a bunch of sage this morning to bring in and dry. I have yarrow drying. And so that's what this deck makes me think of because it's, again, it's bringing it into this indoor context in these images. So it makes me think of this time of year of when it's like, okay, time to really bring in and dry what we're gonna dry, use what we're gonna use because their growing season is nearing an end and it's so much stuff too that either I just use or I do grow I this is the last thing I need to get but I need to find I have so many pairs of gardening gloves and it's just something like I don't know where they go <laughs> I'm always losing them just misplacing them but you, I need my gloves to deal with the nettle because it does sting until it's processed in some sort of way but that's the last thing I really need to do a good harvest of because I do like having it but yeah so this that's what that feels like to me so she's in the main use right now the witch's kitchen let it okay we've got soul cats I I'm obsessed with this bag for it I really am Oh, I love this deck so much. And I love the color I edged it in that green. Do I have any words to explain why? It's it's just the vibe of it. You know what it is? Adam Oler's art is just... It's fall and winter to me. It doesn't really matter. Do I, I use... I'm using something by him. Like, or, you know, that has artwork of his, I should say all year long between this and all the Three Trees tarot decks, but 
I feel like all of them come out to play, especially in the fall time. And there's just such a cozy feeling to this. And with the cats, I think because mostly I experience cats as indoor creatures, It makes me think of this one as fall, be I don't know, because indoors. <laughs> Although I do have some mischievous neighborhood friends who are let outside to adventure by, I don't know, whoever owns them on this street. I do like them. <laughs> They're very sweet cats, but... I try to keep them away as much as possible. One, it bothers Stevie. She is territorial. Two, I try my best to attract a lot of bird life to my yard, and so I don't want to then have them be in danger. But anyway, I love this deck so much. Oh my gosh, I just love it so much. It does have a dark academia feel to me as well. So I think that's also why it feels good to this time of year. So that's a Soul Cats tarot. But let's show next. Ooh, let's show what I really like to pair it with. Although I've been seeing Jess from Jess Reads Cards pair this with the Memento Mori Oracle, which I've been using a ton lately. And so I need to try that out. But otherwise, what I really like to pair it with is the Compendium of Witches. Oracle, which again, perfect for this time of year. I keep mine separated into the witches and the, I, don't, I forget what they call it in the book, if it's the witches tools or whatever, but, but like these object cards. And so when I use this Oracle, I like to pull both. I just find it fun. But yeah, this is Probably my favorite pairing for the Soul Cast. I also just, I love this deck in general. I just think it's so well done. I like using it in this way too. Cause like, look how beautiful these look together. I don't want to really get like one or the other. I want both. <laughs> and then adding Soul Cats next to this is just so good. It's so good. But I think it'd be really cool to do a big reading where I use all three. I think that could be interesting. But yeah, I love this one this time of year too. It's got a real, again, because we still get a lot of green, but it's, of course, very witchy feeling. It's so pretty. I could look at this all day. But that is the Compendium of Witches Oracle. And look at the backs. The backs, too, just make it feel perfect for this time of year. Okay, oh, we've got just a few more left. Again, I'm sure I am forgetting some things. And like, I'm already like looking around at the decks I just have out. And like, oh, what about that? Like, the Raven's Dream Tarot. This wasn't in there, but I just spotted it. And I think, I think we just gotta show it. Because as I've talked about a bunch, I am obsessed with the um, I say that and then I'm like, what's the color again? I'm not the color. What? Where did that come out of my brain? What's the name again? Unfinished Business. Unfinished Business, A Ghostly Tarot by MJ Colonane. But I'm holding on to that till at least mid-September. But this has a real, like, dark forest feel to it, too. And of course, this raven theming to it feels... perfectly spooky as well but then we get all this green oh yes this is a good one for this time of year too I really like this one as well and so I think this would be a perfect transition like in between until I get to unfinished business but all but like unfinished business to me is the entirety of the darker half of the year so yeah, anyway, Raven's Dream. I'm gonna include that in there too. Okay, next is one. I haven't had out, oh my gosh, truly in so long. 
Because some of these are ones that, I don't know, I just take out to even just play with sometimes. But this one, I don't know. I don't know why. It's the Anna K Tarot, which I think, I think is maybe out of print now, question mark? I don't know. That seems wild. Oh. The colors in this one. I The art in this, I can't. The yellows. It's something about the yellows that make it feel so perfect to this time of year. It's very medieval feeling, which again, that's the vibe. This, this is one that feels good for September and November for me. Especially November, I really get into medieval feeling things. I always am though. Gosh, I really was a medieval times history kid. <laughs> There's like a, uh, definitely a few memes. I can't think of exactly what they say, but they talk about like, oh, are you, are you a late diagnosed neurodivergent? <laughs> like, did you love to have a weird love for the Titanic <laughs> as a kid? Which yes, but more so for me is like Renaissance history, but like medieval history. I just, oh my gosh, I loved it so much and I still do. And this is what reminds me of that. And so, yeah. Oh, the yellows, the yellows are so good in this deck. I can't wait. I love this deck so much. Anna K. Tarot. And I love, really love the bag I made for this. It feels so harvest season, doesn't it? Oh, so pretty. All right, we've got three more and they're all oracles. Although should I do a mention for, yeah, let's do that. The Lenormand, since I am doing the uh, Learn Lenormand Together video series, following along with that that Lisa's doing, I've really been trying to read Lenormand. And so Nocturnal Garden, that's my, my go-to right now. I love it. But also the Enchanted Woods. That feels good for this time of year, too. Um, and then also to say, all of my Holly Oddly decks. I have the teeny tiny tarot right here, so that's what I'll pull out. But I just got in her new mini divvies, which I'm obsessed with. But really all fall time long, all winter long, all year round. <laughs> Let's be honest. I love the Holly Holly decks, but like that is, this is like really perfect for this time of year. And so I've really been getting back into using these again, especially because I've been working on, not really, I working on, I suppose, but just like, no, yeah, I'm going to say working on because I've been testing out the readings that I'm going to talk about but using some of her new mini divvies for a, I'm going to say for a tarot and neurodivergence video, but I don't mean that <laughs> necessarily. And like, that's how it, like how it sounds like that. That's how it works. Um, I don't really know how else to phrase it. It's not like, uh, I guess the thing to say is I've been, since I got the new mini divvies, they sparked an idea for readings I can do for myself when it comes to things that I've just been working on, learning, working through when it comes to my own neurodivergence. And so when I say working on a new video of that, I more so mean like, I'm going to share, <laughs> which is always how they go. But anyway, I couldn't figure out for a second how to say that. But yes, something about the... Well, one of the new mini divvies and then one of the ones that I had, but the new one kind of sparked the idea. So stay tuned for that. I just haven't quite figured out the words. It's been working well, the reading I've been doing. Um, I just, it's one of those things where I have to be in the right mood to talk on it because the words don't come super easily to me. And yeah, words and talking have been bit of a challenge lately if you maybe you've been able to tell <laughs> I feel like I've been saying more so like oh what's the word for that just anyway but these kinds of videos are in when that's going on are easier for me to do because I just I probably got a deck and I could just talk about it like 
and it's a special interest, but when I'm trying to like really talk about a topic, it's harder. Anyway, besides the point. So those decks. Let's, okay, last three. One of them, of course, Scenes of the Witch. Maybon is the seasonal one for September, at least how I work with them. But yes, of course, this is gonna be perfectly suited to the season because that's what it's meant to do. But I love, love all of them, but really this one specifically, I think is my favorite. Just something about it. And it could just be I really like this time of year, but yeah. So we won't get too deep into that. We all we all know her, we all know leather. Seasons of the Witch, Maybon. Cool. And uh, Illuminated Earth, I think, really works well for this time of year. Because uh, throughout the spring and summer, I was using the Faceted Garden by Claire Mac a ton. But then getting into the darker half of the year, this one just feels right. Because it, it, it feels a bit darker. It feels a less, less sort of uh, season specific, I suppose you can say. Or faceted garden, of course, my brain goes garden. And that's it. like the imagery really feels that way. Where this, I don't know, it has more of a fall, winter feeling to me. It feels, again, like, it, something about it feels like nature in slow down, in decay. I love it. It's such a good oracle. Illuminated Earth Oracle. And then, last but not least, I'm guessing, I, I'm sure I have other decks around that as soon as I'm done with this, I'm going to be like, oh, <laughs> that one, that one. But... Last one we're going to talk about for this, and then I would love to also hear what you're planning on working with, but Mushroom Oracle. Yes, it's mushroom season, baby. I love this time of year because I can walk in my backyard, especially in the morning, because of all the dew. Tons of mushrooms growing all around the yard. So of course we have to bring out the Mushroom Oracle. And especially since I've been kind of feeling that dark academia vibe and getting out the fine art decks, these oracles pair so well with any sort of fine art deck. So I've been really liking it with the Tarot of the Huntress, which is another good one for right now. It's just not next to me. So yeah, but anyway, yeah, I love this one. I'm excited about it because I've been using the Flower Oracle again for... I would use it for the spring and summer. I think I only got it in the summer. But now, as we're shifting into fall, it's it's the Mushroom Oracle. I love it. And that, my friends, is the last deck I have to show today. So again, as always, I'll have all the links below. Um, and I'll still have the names. So all the names will be listed. And if there's a link, I'll have a link. But in case there's something I showed that was out of print that you're like, oh, what's the name of that again? It'll be there. Just where I would usually put a link, I'll put out of print. So, I don't know. I felt the need to specify that in case you were really looking for something. But other than that, I'd love to know what you feel like is the vibe for this time of year. or What are you using right now? I always love to know. But other than that, I hope you're having a great day so far. And I'll see you again very soon.